Morning, everybody. How you doing? I'm already lit today. <laughs> But, I need an excuse to put on my favorite Christmas song ever, by the waitresses. How's everyone doing today? This is a VR and beans. Good morning, everybody. I'm waiting for it to rain. <laughs> and I've been slacking. Huh? My room is a mess. And uh, unfortunately, this sucker leaks. <laughs> so I don't know whether to take a bunch of stuff down or I don't know how I'd repair it. You guys want to see it? How do I keep. A ceiling like this from leaking all over. You know, there's stairs above me, obviously. And the water pools up up there and then, uh, <laughs> you know, soaks into the wood and it drips down at various places in here. <clears throat> And it's very hard to maintain, keep an eye on, <laughs> get buckets, and things get lost and ruined, and all bad. It's supposed to be raining right now, and it's not yet, but it's going up, going to rain, possibly for a couple days. Anyways, that's not what this video is about. But you wood dudes out there might be able to have some advice for me. <laughs> I should just make a video about that. I know some of you guys would have some great advice. Beans has this wonderful Christmas gaw going. And uh, he's asking us to give him a good Christmas memory. <laughs> and uh, for some reason, I was struggling with a good Christmas story. And, you know, I've had a lot of great Christmases with my family, with my friends. And I do have a lot of good stories, but I don't know that any are cool enough and or appropriate enough. <laughs> <laughs> for beans uh, family oriented channel <laughs> Kimmy said well isn't it obvious I said no <laughs> she said we brought Violet home on Christmas Day three years ago it's like oh <laughs> yeah yeah and yeah I'll tell that story but I think I'll do it a little closer to Christmas her birthday's three days before Christmas. <clears throat> Bless her little heart. And, uh, it is a good story. But I was thinking of another day. <laughs> and I'm going to say this is around 1999, 2000. I'm not even not sure what year it was. I was around 27 years old. I don't know. But uh, 
one Christmas Eve night after my family festivities. I came home with my family and I walked to the local watering hole, the Liquid Zoo. Played out, Rock Lobster. I am. Men at work. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I went and got a pretty nice buzz on over there at the Liquid Zoo late at night. And I ran into my buddy Mikey Gaz. And I have been and still am friends with Mikey and his brother Dave. And uh, Mikey has two young kids at the time. They're pretty close to growing up now. But the Liquid Zoo was kind of in the parking lot of a motel. <laughs> kind of a seedy one. Cypress Lodge on stinking Lincoln Avenue. And Mikey had fallen on some difficult times. And he had his wife and two kids living in Cypress Lodge behind the Liquid Zoo. And Mikey was in the bar depressed that he didn't have a Christmas tree for his kids and that they were in this motel on Christmas and they had a couple little things to give the kids, you know, and they had grandma and all, you know, but he really wanted them to have a tree. So I said, damn, where can we get a tree? Well, we were less than a mile from his brother Dave's house where I had helped decorate Dave's Christmas tree. Kind of a punk rock Christmas tree, but it was a big one. So, <laughs> Mikey had uh, two scooters in his motel room, like motorized stand on them scooters. And I said, let's go to Dave's. And we went to his motel room, really, really drunk, actually. And it was pouring, pouring rain. I mean, it was a wet, wet, stormy Christmas. No snow in Orange County. <laughs> and I had never ridden one of those things before. <laughs> and it's was generally known back then that I was more handicapped than I am now. <laughs> I could barely walk, really. I could walk to the bar, I guess. So I got on with one of these scooters. Mikey got on the other one without waking the kids. We took them outside and took off down the street. Down stinking Lincoln in the middle of the street. It was a ghost town out. And I remember having to fly over this, like, lake. There was a place where a building had been torn down, and it was just a huge puddle. And I didn't see it in the dark. And I ran straight into it on that scooter. And uh, I didn't know what to do, but luckily I just kept my hand on that gas throttle. And <clears throat> made it across that puddle. I was proud of myself. Mikey and I arrived at Dave's about 2 o'clock in the morning, 2.30. And, uh, we banged on the door and banged on the door and banged on the door. And no one answered. And, uh, we creeped around and stuff. And finally, Dave came to a window and said, what are you guys doing out here? They're like, dude, it's pouring rain. We're covered in mud and we're cold. And can we come in? And he's like, yeah, yeah, get in here. So he let us in and he went back to bed. And uh, we were thinking, thinking, thinking. Christmas tree. How could we get a Christmas tree? 
I saw Dave's tree in the corner. I knew where the tools were. I said, Mikey, why don't we just cut the top off this tree and you'll have a mini tree. And uh, we'll go to my house. I got a bunch of little toys we'll make ornaments out of. Just tie them up, hook them up, and we'll decorate a little tree. And uh, we got a hacksaw out. And somehow, without waking up Dave and B, B boy. <laughs> We got ourselves a four foot Christmas tree. <laughs> and uh, we took it to my house, decorated it up, and took it back on the scooter to the motel room and put it in the room. And the kids got to wake up to a Christmas tree. And every year, not every year, I don't see Mikey every year for Christmas, but almost every year in the holiday time, Mikey will remind me of that day. And I think that's one of his favorite Christmas stories, too. <laughs> Lovely kids. And Mikey may have had his issues, may have his issues. He's such a loving dad, and he really, for the most part, took care of business. Lovely kids. They grew up to be lovely people. Dave woke up with half a Christmas tree. <laughs> and he was a little mad about it. But how mad could he be? That was his niece and nephew. <laughs> he got over it. Anyway, a Christmas memory to share with you guys. Beans, thank you for your awesome call, your awesome channel. And, uh, I appreciate you very much. And I look forward to the drawing. I've been enjoying people's Christmas stories. <laughs> Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Have a really great day. You count your blessings. Among my blessings, I count my pipe club, of course. And as Onion put it last night in a video, our online virtual pipe club, it's not really virtual to me. I've met several of you now, and I'm scheduled to meet more. So, happy holiday, everybody. Hope everybody eats really great. Don't have a place to be, give me a call. <laughs> I love you all very much. The YTPC, the YouTube Pipe Club. Thank you all very much. I'm so grateful for all of you and to all of you. Talk to you guys later. Oh, Black Raspberry and the uh, Paranelli. <laughs> Bye, guys.